And, and then again, how do we get rid of the, the tissue in this septum? So this is an important slide. This is the apical one-third of a root canal system. Anybody can clean in the top one to two millimeters of the apical one-third. It's the bottom two to three millimeters that become difficult to instrument, irrigate, and operate to. So along, in 1983, along comes Chow. And Chow did a classic study. What he did was he took glass tubes and he stretched them into the shape of root canals. He then took positive pressure syringes and injected irrigants into these glass tubes. And what did he find? He found that there was little flushing beyond the depth of the needle unless the needle was bound in the It got Walton and Turbinajat to state that perhaps the most important factor is the delivery system and not the irrigating solution per se. So Chow came up with a paradigm. For a solution to be mechanically effective in removing all the particles in a root canal system, it has to create a current force, reach the apex, and carry the particles. So how do we reach the apex with full strength sodium hypochlorite? This is where um, Dr. Schoffel's invention is simple but brilliant. So if we think about fluid dynamics, what's preventing this at the apex of a root canal system? It was often observed during ex the experiments that if an air bubble or column was present in the canal, the irrigant was unable to displace or pass around it. So let's look at apical positive pressure syringes. Most of us uh, would probably say they use full strength sodium hypochlorite or maybe they dilute it. But obviously, I think studies show that full strength sodium hypochlorite is the only true effective irrigant. And we use Use it in a side vented needle, and we follow the manufacturer's recommended um, suggestion. We stay two or three millimeters away from working length. We gently press on the syringe. We don't bind the needle into the root canal system, and we irrigate. But what do we find? How much, so, um, how much of the solution has gotten into the apical one third? That would be zero, and the rate of flow in the apical one third is zero. No irrigant, rate of flow in the apical one-third is, uh, is zero. So what I thought I was doing for all those years of endodontic practice was I thought I was taking a 15K file and placing it into the, the um, root canal system. And that's not showing that. Let me just see if we can get that to go. There we go. So you'll see that the needle actually passes through the solution into the apical vapor lock. And this defies the law of physics if you think that you're going to push solution into the apical three millimeters because the surface tension is such that the, the 15K file passes right through the um, solution and none gets to the apical three millimeters. And this was actually proven by Steve Senior back in 1971. So let's do what we did before with a side vented needle, but this time we're going to on the uh, right side, press a little bit harder to get that solution into the apical three millimeters. And lo and behold, we got it into the apical three millimeters, but what else did we do? We got it overflow into the periapical tissues. And this is what a sodium hypochlorite accident could look like. They can be devastating. They can cause a permanent paresthesia and or a permanent disfigurement. This lady was lucky she fully recovered. So how do we reach the apex? How do we get full strength sodium hypochlorite under a current flow to working length? And this is where Dr. Shaw, if this next one will get us, there we go. And then let's see if we can get it. There we go. So we get the micro cannula up to working length. We place solution into the chamber, full strength sodium hypochlorite. And as long as that micro cannula is at working length, and as long as we're adding solution here, we will get a current flow at working length for as long as we need. So there is a protocol that we use. We use full strength sodium hypochlorite followed by EDTA to get rid of the smear layer and then back with full strength sodium hypochlorite to hit the, the dentinal tubules and the lateral canals.